Hello and welcome to today's video. I hope you like the new setup. I'm actually sitting on the floor to do this video, but the floor has a nice padded carpet and I'm actually very comfortable. So that's uh, that's fantastic for me. So welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about my secret weapon against mold and mycotoxins. And I'll just tell you why I'm doing this video. So I was on a client call the other day, actually yesterday, in fact, and I just... I just got this feedback from the client that was, you should make a video about this. You know, you're explaining this very well to me. You're explaining this very clearly. I like your other videos. I don't think you have a video about this, so you should do it. So I, I took that feedback and I applied it and I'm doing it today. So today I'm going to reveal to you, but actually I'm not really revealing it because if you know me and you followed my work for a while, you, you'll already know this is one of my, my biggest super weapons, but it's especially effective against mold and mycotoxins and actually any type of fat soluble toxin in particular but what soluble toxins too it's pretty much universally a, a great one so before i tell you what it is i want you to leave me a comment below and guess and it doesn't matter what you if you're wrong like like it, it, it doesn't matter like no one cares if you're wrong but i think it would be really interesting to see your guesses i think it'd be really interesting for me and i think it will be really interesting for everybody else and if you get it right you don't win anything, unfortunately, but still, I mean, you, you, you win. So make sure you leave your guess before I tell you. I'm going to tell you in two seconds. So make sure you leave it below. My secret weapon is juicing. Juicing is my secret weapon against mold and mycotoxins. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to explain to you all of the different things that juicing does that makes it such a universally effective therapy for for people that have mold and mycotoxic sensitivities or illness but I, I do want to give you a little side note here i know that a lot of people that have a biotoxin illness if they're sick from from mold and mycotoxins food intolerances um, chronic inflammatory response syndrome food sensitivities just not being able to tolerate certain things oxalates salicylates histamines etc etc there's a, a big list of different things i'm gonna just say first of all if you have sensitivities to any of these things then don't juice things that you're sensitive to. So for example, if you are histamine intolerant, don't juice peppers, don't juice lemons. Even if like, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about lemons in the video probably because they're a really great one to juice. If you have a sensitivity or intolerance to them, don't juice them. Simple as. So take what you can from the video and whatever doesn't apply to you, don't, don't use it. If you can't do juicing right now, then, then also don't use it. Like if you have salicylate sensitivity, you're probably going to struggle with juicing because there's salicylates in all vegetables. And one of the, the main reasons that juicing is so powerful is we're concentrating everything that's in vegetables, but that does include the anti-nutrients too, like the salicylates. So if this doesn't work for you, then don't use it. But for everybody else, this is this is wildly effective and just work, work around it according to your sensitivity. So if you have oxalate problems, don't juice, don't juice spinach. And ju just be just be smart about it, you know, apply it to your your personal health situation. So the first layer is it's an easy one. It's hydration. A lot of people are dehydrated, but, but hydration isn't simply a matter of just drink more water. That's not how hydration works. The type of water is important. Your body has to actually be able to use it. And the water that you get in juice is the most like bioavailable and usable water that you can get. It's basically distilled water most of the time because it's, it's rainwater, right? Even like most water that's in like rivers and things like that in streams actually comes from the rain because obviously the, the, the cycle moves the, moves the water around with the rain. So it's, it's rainwater, it's distilled water. But then the plant structures it. As it goes through the plant, the plant it just does something to it. I don't know what it is. I'm sure there's some sciencey stuff. I'm sure there's some like magical stuff. Like you don't need to know exactly what it is, but getting like hydration from like fruits and vegetables is I find far superior to just drinking even like the highest quality, like you say, distilled water, reverse osmosis water, all, all of those different things, like juicing the best kind of water, but water is only half of it. The other half is the other half of hydration is electrolytes. And when you do juicing, you're going to get the right, the right, um, the right combination of all these different types of electrolytes that you need, as well as other things that maybe you don't think about. Like hydration is also about trace minerals. You get trace minerals in juicing. You're going to get magnesium. You're going to get potassium. 
calcium, zinc, you're going to get all these different things that all affect different, that, that they're really important in the hydration process. So juicing, first of all, hydrates you, which is massively important. I think I saw a study that was something along the lines of a, a like being dehydrated by like 10% reduces the function in the body of like detoxification, immune function by like, like, like mag orders of magnitude higher than the level of dehydration. So like 10% dehydration, you see like a 40% reduction in immunity and detox and all these other processes. So making sure your body is hydrated correctly, again, not just drinking more water, it's the blend of the right kind of water and electrolytes and these other substances is very powerful in itself. So that's, that's point number one. The next is, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot here. There's not really a particular order. I'm just going through them as they, as they come to me. So the next I would say that's, that's very important is you're going to get a lot of different types of nutrients and you're going to get them in very high volumes as well. So if you think about eating like a whole pack of carrots, for example, like you're not a rabbit. And I mean, I don't even know if carrots are actually good for rabbits, but you, you see the cartoons, right? You're not a rabbit. You don't just sit there like munching salad all day. And even if you did, you would, you would eat a pack of carrots and like, you're done. Like you cannot handle that much fiber. You just, you just can't, it, it, it would, you would be so full. So with juicing, we can put these like shots of nutrition in between your meals to boost your overall nutrient intake. You're going to get lots of different. So like the, the whole B complex, apart from like B12, basically you're getting, you're getting some thiamine, some B2, some, you get some folate, you get basically most of the B vitamins, you're going to get a, a good dose. And also it's in a right ratio. You know, it's a, it's really important that these things are in the right ratio and, and they are because nature is intelligent. You're also going to get things like vitamin C and other types of antioxidants. I'm going to talk more about the antioxidants in a minute, but that is also a nutrient that you're going to be getting there. You're also going to get minerals. I did mention trace minerals. As long as you're, you're juicing from veg vegetables that are grown in high quality soil. So you'd, you'd be ideally looking for like organic and biodynamic. I wouldn't juice non-organic produce because you concentrate everything when you juice it. So just as you concentrate these nutrients, so you're going to get a whole pack of carrots worth of nutrition in like a little glass like this. If you're getting non-organic produce, you're going to get all of this pesticides in this little shot as well. So it's really important when you're juicing that you, 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 you do it as clean as possible. Honestly, I've juiced not organic before and I, I was fine. I think the benefits still outweigh the, the, the drawbacks, but it would, I would say generally it's better to just juice a small amount of good quality produce, like organic, biodynamic stuff that is over here. They've got this, this section in the supermarket. It's called pesticide free or pesticide safe. So it's like not certified organic, but they just don't spray it with pesticides, which is really, really cool. That was a really cool thing to see over here in Thailand is where I am right now. So you want to make sure that the quality is good, but if the quality is good and the soils are good, you're going to get a lot of different types of minerals as well. So this includes like trace minerals, even like the, the like chromium, molybdenum, all of those like little ones, but also the potassium, the magnesium, the, the bigger ones, you're going to get those too. And those are also concentrated because again, whole pack of carrots, one little glass, you're getting all of that, all of that combined in that little glass. And it's not replacing your food. You're having it in between the meals you'd usually be having too. So you're just loading that much extra nutrition into your body and more the more like thinking about these nutrients as like the raw resources that your body needs for like immune function for detoxification for like all of, all of the different things it's you're just giving your body more it's going to make sure that it can that's not the rate limiting factor your body is able to keep going at the maximum speed because you've provided it with like a surplus of nutrients so next one antioxidants you get vitamin c but you get a lot more than vitamin c and this is where one of the benefits of juicing different things comes in so when you're juicing you get like 80 percent of the benefits regardless of what you juice so for like five years i juiced kale pure kale juice that was it nothing nothing else just kale that's all i could tolerate that was the situation that i was in that's kind of what i had to do and you're going to get 80 percent of the benefits even if you just juice one thing but if you can start juicing other things, so I'll give you a, 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 a like a sort of template recipe that I find works very well for most of my clients. It's, it's tasty, it's effective, and it's generally quite sustainable. 
would be a base of celery or cucumber. If you have more gut problems, cucumber is generally not as well tolerated. Causes like a bit of bloating, a bit of gassiness. In some people, I'd say about 30% of people, cucumber just doesn't agree with them, that I'm one of those people. And I also just really don't like the taste. So again, this is a template. You can like play with that. It. It's not, it's not like the Bible. You don't have to like follow it to the, to the word, you know, just take, take what you can from it. So good template recipe, celery or cucumber is the base because they're really watery. So they're going to give you some volume of juice. Good for the hydration part. Combine it with some type of green. This can be like lettuce. This could be cabbage. You can actually be smart here and you can juice, for example, like the leaves from the outside of your cauliflower that you just throw in the bin or you just throw straight in the compost. The broccoli stems that are too hard to eat, you can just juice them. They've got loads of nutrients in there. You're going to remove all of those indigestible parts because you ju the juicer is just going to basically process it for you. And then you just throw that waste in the bin or in the compost and then you get the juice out of it. So you can be smart with this as well. And actually, th this is really helpful for juicing on a budget, especially because like I, like I said, organic and biodynamic stuff is, isn't cheap. So it's a shame to just throw your broccoli stems away. For example, you can just, you can juice them. So you can stick some of that in there. I would also go with a bit of ginger. It's a nice digestive stimulant, makes it taste nice in a, in a different kind of way. It's not really like flavor, but it gives it some more, it gives it like some heat and it is really, really helpful for the digestion as well. It can help you, so it can help you tolerate it and some lemon. So lemon is a really nice one, stimulates a bile release. It's a lemon, like you can Google the benefits of lemon water. It's like lemon water on steroids if, you, if you're juicing it. I would say don't juice the skin just because it tastes very bitter and it will make your juice kind of a bit foamy and it's not as pleasant. So I would, I would peel, I would peel your lemon. I mean, that, that, that's my suggestion. I don't, I don't juice the whole lemon. I would, I would peel it or put less of the, of the skin in than, than the whole thing. And you can, you can build on it from there. You know, um, a little bit of apple is a nice option. Um, you can get some malic acid. It's really helpful for dissolving gallstones and also stimulating the liver. Um, especially the sour apples like the granny smith and you're also keeping it kind of low carb as well if carbs aren't a problem for you like shove some carrots in there go crazy with some fruit like whatever you want some pears can be nice if you've got access to things like i don't know like papaya or mangoes or things like that and you want to put that in there absolutely go for it but again you don't have to just having even one ingredient say i've had clients that tolerate one vegetable it's like courgettes it's like if that's all you tolerate just juice courgettes, that's fine. That will work. If you just tolerate carrots, then do that. If you just tolerate turnips, the juice probably isn't going to taste that good, but it will probably still work. So just work with what you've got. You know, don't have to be perfect. You can get most of the benefits even just from juicing one vegetable. So yeah, um, other things with the, with the antioxidants. The more variety you have, the more different flavonoids and different types of plant chemicals that you're going to be giving your body. So just as in a toolbox, you have different tools that are better at doing different jobs. You also have different antioxidants that are better at binding or removing different types of toxins. And like, you could do this like really scientifically and be like, oh, like this binds to this and that binds to that. It's like, you don't really need to know. You just need to juice more variety and try juicing things that you actually like. Like your body is intelligent. It tells you what to eat by you being hungry for it. Like if you're liking the taste of a juice, that's probably your body saying, there's something in here that's giving me an antioxidant that I really, really need. And then your body will meet that need. And then it will be like, hmm, that food doesn't really do that for me anymore. I don't really like the taste of that. And then you'll want something else. You know, body's intelligent. You don't need to intellectually understand. You just need to trust, trust your body, trust how you feel, trust what you like. So if you, if you can, if you're at the stage where you can do that, try juicing different things and see what you like the taste of and just, just go with that. But the more variety that you get in there, and we're talking like you can juice up to like 10 or 15 different ingredients. And you can even put things like herbs in there. So you can put a bit of parsley, a bit of uh, a bit of like basil, things like that. You can, that, I mean, these are more strong. You can juice things like rosemary. I remember juicing like a whole stick of rosemary and the whole thing was like, felt really peppery in my ears. It was way too much for me. So be careful with herbs like ginger and turmeric, rosemary, things like that. They're very strong, but you can stick some of these things in there and just juice different vegetables and different like vegetable waste that you have just just stick it all in there they're going to give you different bioflavonoids and different plant chemicals that provide different antioxidant benefits for different toxins so it's kind of like it ampl it like gives you like what an antioxidant does 
on steroids. It like boosts it massively. It's, it makes it far more effective. So you can, you can get that benefit, but then there's actually a layer on top. And this is where we talk more about the effect on the microbiome. So when you juice different things, these different plant chemicals and different plant compounds, they feed different gut bacteria. And when they feed different gut bacteria, they actually turn a lot of these substances into even more powerful versions of antioxidants. So it's like your gut has all these microflora. They take these, these, these antioxidants and these plant compounds and they like work on them. Like they eat them and they like get fuel out of them. And then they basically poop out an even more powerful antioxidant that your body can then absorb. And it's even more powerful for you. So there's like this really cool combination between the antioxidants that you that you take and the the plant the plant compounds and the impact on the microbiome they produce you more powerful antioxidants and you actually feed your healthy flora which improves your microbiome diversity which is one of the things that people really get stuck with with mold and biotoxin illness this is one of these really important steps in the removal process so all of the mycotoxins that are exiting your body like 80 to 90 percent of them are coming out through your bile they're being bound in your gut and they're being removed in your stool and juicing really helps because it provides this binding component. You've got lots of different types of fibers and these different types of antioxidants that actually, that are actually things that can be bound to. So they're like natural binders, but this binding is not a passive process. It's not like the bile comes into the gut with the toxin and the fibers here and the fiber grabs it or the toxin is like, Oh, I want to be over here. It doesn't happen like that. This happens because of the probiotics in your gut, the, the beneficial bacteria. So the beneficial bacteria are like, oh, look, there's a toxin. Let's, bro let's break this bile acid down. So it breaks it down, pulls the toxin out. You can reabsorb this. You reabsorb your bile. It's very expensive to make. And it recycles like nine or 10 times before it actually comes out. But now you're now this bug is holding onto this toxin. And it either, it either dies and just stays bound to it. And then you, you poop that out like your poop is 80% dead bacteria. So that happens. But also sometimes they take the toxin off and they're like, oh, I've got a toxin here. What can I do with it? And then there's like all of these antioxidants and all of these, these fibers from this, from this juicing. And they're like, oh, I'll just stick it on here. It just sticks it on. And then this probiotic is still alive and this goes off and you, you poop it out. And that's how you get rid of the toxin. So this provides, this supports like three of these really important stages in the six steps that your body uses to detox mold. If you haven't caught that video already, you can go on my YouTube channel and check it out. Six steps to detox mold, scientific formula. I've used this with hundreds, probably getting closer to thousands of clients now, at least hundreds, and it's really effective and it works. And one of the big things that supports this, this process is the juicing. And that's why I wanted to detail it today. It really helps with these bottom three steps, the bile, the gut flora, and the actual like resolving constipation and making sure the poop is going out because you know you've got the electrolytes the soluble fiber the hydration all these things they all help so when you combine the antioxidant benefits and these different types of fibers benefits so like if you look at a lot of binders you got like citrus pectin or apple pectin and they're being given as as binders it's like why don't you just juice why don't you just juice them just juice the apples and juice the lemons because you get all the other things that you need in that detox process all in the same place. It's like nature is so intelligent and it just put it all in one thing. But then we're like, oh, we'll take the vitamin C and I'll take that as a supplement and I'll take the B complex and I'll take that and I'll take this binder and then I'll take this probiotic. It's like, if you just juice the thing, you get all of it in like a concentrated dose. And that's why this is such a powerful modality because it, it just ticks every single box along the process. And because it's juice, it's concentrated. So it's, it just, it emphasizes the benefits, you know, again, big bag of carrots, couldn't eat it all. You can put it into a little kind of like a juice shot like this and just in between your food, extra nutrition, extra probiotics, extra prebiotics, extra polyphenols, extra everything. I think that's everything. I think that that's all of the benefits. I'll just sit with that and make sure I didn't miss one because I wouldn't want you to miss out. Yep. I think that's everything. So this is, this is why juicing is such a, a powerful modality. And this is one of my, my number one weapons that I use against like mold and mycotoxin illness. It just ticks so many boxes. If you're going to start juicing, how, again, have a look on my channel, look at the six steps to detox mold, watch that video first that we helpful. 
I also have other videos about juicing as well. When you start juicing, you want to start small. Like we just talked, this is like really powerful stuff. So you want to start small. We're talking like half a cup, half a cup of juice, like once, that's it. If you're really, really sensitive, I've had clients that needed to start down at a teaspoon. And I know that sounds like inconvenient and almost silly and kind of annoying, but that's where some people are. And if that's where you are, then you have to accept that and you have to start at that step. Because if you do more, it's just going to not make you feel very good. So start wherever you're ready. If you're super sensitive, try a teaspoon to a tablespoon. If you're doing okay, go for half a glass, see how you feel. And you can build this. And I'd say you get probably like the ma the maximum benefits at somewhere between 800 milliliters and a liter per day. Is that a lot of juice? Yes. Is it expensive? It can be. It can be quite expensive. Is it worth it? It's like, well, how much money are you spending on supplements? How much money is it costing you being sick? You know, I get, I get it. I'm not saying it isn't expensive. It is like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying that, but it ticks all of the boxes and it just works. So just do the best you can. Even if all you can afford is just a little tiny bit, even once or twice a week, it will be really, really helpful. I promise. It's one of the things that made the biggest difference for me. I hope you found this really helpful. I hope you use this super weapon. If you've watched all the way to the end, and you've tried either, either give me one of these two responses in the comments below. Either say, I haven't tried juicing yet. This is what I'm going to try. This is what I think I'm going to do. Or if you have been juicing before or you are juicing currently, let me know what you're juicing and give me your favorite recipe because this isn't just going to be helpful for me. This is going to be helpful for everybody else that is either already juicing or hasn't started juicing yet. So you can actually help everybody else that's watching the video by letting them know what you're juicing. And if you aren't juicing yet, let us know what you think you're going to try and also take a look at everybody else's suggestions so you can have some ideas of things that you want to that you want to try. There's a lot of stuff online as well. So you can look up a lot about, about juicing. So I hope you found that really, really helpful. If you do have any questions, do leave them as a comment and I'll get back to you. I answer every single question that I get. I mean, I, I do my best. You know, it's, it's hard. Sometimes I don't get notifications. Every time I see a comment that I get notified about, I, I'll, I'll answer every single question. So if you have any questions, please just let me know and I'll catch you in the next video. See you. Bye.